same viewing from the comfort of your own bed. Impossible? Not with technology, it isn't. Juliet finds out more. It's 4.30 a.m. and you're on holiday, but your alarm goes off anyway. You have to get out of your warm bed and into an open-top Jeep for the game drive you booked. There isn't even a guarantee that you'll see anything. As much as this holds no appeal to me, I realize that it is all about the experience for others. But what if you could just watch it live from the warmth of your own bed? WildEarth.tv has cameras all over the world, live streaming from incredible locations like black bear dens in the USA and stork's nests in Romania. In January, 600,000 people were able to watch Nina the Chimp give birth, live on camera via the Yarklik satellite connection at the Jane Goodall Chimp Eden Institute in Mpumalanga. Yarklik is a broadband satellite service aimed at businesses and communities operating in remote areas that do not have access to a reliable ADSL connection. This service enables platforms like WildEarth.tv to make use of uncapped upstream video at a low cost from virtually any location with a power source. Our product is really doing well in South Africa. We're privileged to say that it is still rapidly growing in South Africa. Nearly 10% of South African commercial farmers make use of the product. We provide services to schools and universities that stream lectures to rural sites in South Africa. I started doing live broadcasting um, of wildlife locations, waterholes in particular, um, in 1998. When we started, we were doing just a 30 second refresh JPEG in a company called Africam. And in about 2000, 2001, it became necessary to start doing live streaming. At that stage, for, we were only sending a 56 kilobit per, per second stream out from, from Southern Africa to our servers in, in the US at the time. And um, the price of that bandwidth to backhaul from then until now, so from 2000 to 2013, it was 2,500% 2, more expensive then than it is now. So I've seen an immense drop in, in price. And bear in mind that for the first 10 years of live broadcasting of, of wildlife content, it was technically impossible to make a profit out of, out of that, that video because we weren't able to insert advertising into the video streams. So it only even became possible in late 2008 to generate enough revenue to pay for the content. But still the bandwidth was so high, coming from Africa, which is why we, we started to deal more and more with broadcasters in, in North America, basically because it was possible to make those viable. In a nation that is relatively bandwidth poor, the rolling beach ball or spinning buffer icon is commonplace and immensely frustrating. But this new satellite internet system promises smooth viewing. We can manage to stream smoothly because we identified the need for this type of product correctly. The service plan for streaming is well specified and our systems are engineered to meet the data requirements for uninterrupted smooth streaming. We managed to keep the cost down by using the now well-known KA band uh, satellite technology. KA band allows for frequency reuse on satellites because of its high frequency. In a frequency reuse scheme, the same frequency is reused uh, numerous times over different geographical areas, much like the cellular uh, cell phone technology. Frequency reuse increased the spectrum efficiency, which directly translates to increased throughput. The reuse of spectrum obviously decreased the cost of bandwidthing. Of course, this in no way replaces the real thing. But if you prefer the warmth and comfort of a down duvet over the open top Jeep, then this might just be for you.